I'd like to welcome you to the Biesi America location here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Pete Hauser. We went ahead and we are doing a complete list as far as what materials you need to properly set your tools. We we're also going to go ahead and find exactly how you take those measurements, how you upload those into the software on both the CAM software and the CNC itself. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making a footprint. With that footprint, it's going to show us how we have to adjust those tools up or down. And we're also going to go ahead and show you how to put those polishers in properly without overpressure. Once we get those footprints created, we're going to go ahead and show you exactly those quality edges. So how you can maintain those edges as well. Then we're gonna take some time and actually do an evaluation of a time study, how you can do a time study so you can figure out exactly how much that machine can produce for you. Okay, well, we're gonna get started on creating that footprint and actually running these tools on the machine. So what we're gonna do is start off with that Super Z. I went ahead and watered down the table. Sometimes putting water on the table will actually help with that suction. So if you have any leaks or issues, uh, that definitely helps uh, create a much stronger vacuum on the table itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that uh, Super Z first. It's gonna go ahead and trim that one millimeter off the material. Then we're gonna take our first position diamond, second, third, fourth, and fifth position diamond. We'll be able to kind of run those tools fairly fast. It's a little bit safer. And when we get into the polish wheels, we're gonna have to slow things down and verify some of our heights and uh, diameters. So I'm gonna come over here to the program itself and we're gonna go ahead and press start. Always keeping the controls in hand, making sure that we're going to go ahead and kind of walk these tools in at the very, very beginning. And we may go ahead and even pause these tools at one point in the piece. So bringing it down right now, I'm going to go ahead and kind of ease it in. Once I have contact, remember we have these extreme high speeds at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, pause it right here. And I want to check my height to make sure that I have the true height. Sometimes utilizing a credit card can simply go ahead and give you a quick eye on this Super Z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that card, I'm going to go directly up against the surface, and I'm going to come up to the piece. Right now, I'm just barely coming into contact with that piece itself or with the, uh, the tool. And I can tell that, you know what, I might want to go ahead and drop this down a little bit more. It's coming into contact with the full piece. I actually have diamond below the surface. However, I want to go ahead and bring it just a little bit more, just in case we have some material that has some bowing or whatever. So it's going to go ahead and take care of that. So there's no issues with this. We'll go ahead and make that adjustment after the fact. So we'll start this back up turning your feed rate back down to zero. So you'll see rotation come on. And we'll start this right back up running. And we'll go straight all the way up to the 300 inches a minute. So next we're gonna have our first position profiled T33R3. Once again, just gonna kind of slowly bring it in here until it brings contact. If I'm setting into the profile, I know I'm going to be good. Top and bottom if you want to verify that. So I know that my setup is fine top and bottom, and we're good to run. Once again, feed rate back down to zero. Press start. We'll see the tool start to rotate. Once it's in full rotation, we'll start the process back up and we'll turn it all the way. Once it comes into contact at the very beginning, we'll increase that feed rate all the way to 100%. So we can do the same thing with position two. Now remember that this is gonna be running at 500 inches a minute. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to slow it down at the very front and then we can increase that feed rate. Making sure that my lineup is approximately right. So I know that it's gonna come into the diamond on both the top and the bottom. So I don't have an issue there. So remember, this is a first original setup. So if you do this the first time, this process is gonna be a little bit slower. Down the road, when you rerun these footprints, it's gonna be less than five minutes to go ahead and run that. Now we're coming into position four, profiling tool. We're gonna go ahead and we'll ease it in slightly. Sounds good. And we'll run that full speed. Once again, this is our position five diamond. 
So our diamonds are a little bit safer, so that's why I highly suggest going to a five diamond rather than a four diamond three polish. Utilizing five diamond, most colors you'll be okay with one polish, or you might have to utilize that second polisher for the darker materials. Now we're grabbing the polish wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this feed rate all the way down to zero, because what we wanna do with this particular tool is two things right now. We need to make sure that our height is exactly right. Now with polishers, they're not as forgiving as the diamond. So if I made a mistake on the polisher, it's gonna damage that polisher and it's gonna have an issue from here on out. So we have to be very, very particular in how we're doing our setup on this. So right now I have it in manual. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna to go to my axes and I'll be able to go ahead and using the remote adjust this properly. So first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with my X and I'm gonna go in a positive direction. So I like to turn these all the way down, go positive, slowly move, and as you can see, it's moving across. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in towards the piece, constantly rotating. So if I rotate this, I know that I'm not in contact. I'll be able to feel that contact. So as I go ahead and I have this in my Y, I'm gonna go positive Y in towards the piece. As I bring it in, I'm gonna feel once it starts coming into contact. So right now I've got a positive, I'm moving very, very slowly, and I'm starting to feel it come into contact, okay? Once you feel that contact, I know that it's touching somewhere on it, so you have to go ahead and inspect. Back here right now, I can see that I have a gap sitting on the back side. So what it's telling me is I'm hitting on that profile, so on the radius, so the tool is too high. So what I need to do is drop that tool down and encapsulate that profile a little bit closer. So I'm gonna to go to my Z right now, and I'm gonna go in the negative direction down with that tool. So as I bring it in a negative direction, once again, I'm gonna rotate so it's rotating freely. I'll go ahead and do my best to eyeball that adjustment. So now it's rotating freely again. I wanna bring it back in with my Y direction. So what I wanna do is make sure that we have a nice Nice contact, nothing too much. So maybe I'll back that off just a hair. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to my Z and I'm gonna go Z positive now to bring that back up. So in some cases you wanna go ahead and utilize a light can be extremely helpful in this. Having somebody else's eyes can be extremely helpful as well. And keep in mind as we adjust this tool, we're gonna to do the same thing for the following polisher as well. And I'd say we're fairly good right there. So now we'll be able to see exactly what our Z height was and what our new Z height needs to be. What that's gonna tell us is how much we need to offset that tool. And we're gonna go ahead and do a negative offset of 0 0.022. This is gonna give us that exact height. So that height is gonna drop down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same offset of point 0 0.22 for the next tool as well. I'm gonna make the assumption that those two are very, very accurate or very close to each other. So selecting position six, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my feed rates back down, but I'm gonna hit F1 to start this program. I'm gonna come back over here and we'll get this machine rolling into it. Once again, I wanna verify that my Z that I just put in was correct, because what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna take any opportunities to damage this polisher, especially if you're new on it. Verify, double check multiple times. So we'll bring it right to the stone. I know that I'm good. I'm gonna go ahead and reset again. And what we'll do is we'll put this in a manual mode so we can adjust it. So once again, I'm gonna take my X and I'm gonna move my X in a positive direction. So we'll go X positive, slowing the feed rate first, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be Y is gonna bring it in towards the piece. We're gonna go in the Y positive direction. So I'm gonna slowly bring this up towards the piece. As I bring it in fairly close, I'm gonna dial down the amount of feed rate that I'm bringing it in, so I'll go ahead and dial that back down to about two. 
and we'll slowly bring that thing in. So rotating it so I know exactly what we're doing as far as the contact. And now I'm going ahead and I want to see less and less light. So as I rotate this in, I'm making sure that my height was exactly right of how I programmed it the last time. So I have good contact all the way through and we're gonna go ahead and start this program again. So right now what I wanna do is I wanna pull this back off of the piece. So what I wanna go ahead and do is I'm gonna set my adaptive thrust on this particular tool. We're gonna to set it at one right now, okay? We have the adaptive thrust range, okay? I want my range not to exceed over 0.25. 0.25 so the range is what's acceptable for it so it's going to have a green section of what's good and how much it can go high or low so what it's going to allow it to do is have my adaptive thrust typically it's going to run at 0.75 all the way up to 1.25 so as we have that adaptive thrust we're good we have a statistical wear which is going to go ahead and increase that diameter so as it runs all the way out it will increase that diameter ever so slightly so the next time it comes into touch or into contact it will not come in too hard so after we set both the adaptive thrust and the adaptive thrust range and we have the statistical wear now we're good to go so we're going to go ahead and bring this in slow as we start to see it's coming close into contact i'm setting it down to zero while i'm talking to you so we're gonna slowly increase that so as the tool comes in, we can avoid it coming in too hard just in case there was some mistake or we made an issue or, or made a problem rather than going ahead and allowing that tool to come in too hard and damage that polisher or damage the piece, we don't have that issue. So we're slowly gonna bring it in. We can hear that nice contact. We're seeing over at the screen where it's jumping one to two. Its display will not show decimals so we're only going to see those values. So what we may want to do is we may want to run this a couple times just to get its break-in period a little bit more. So typically what I like to do is get the tools set up and then run a sample piece or an island top that you can go ahead and really break these in. But as of right now, we're just going to go ahead and run this right to here. And let's say we're going to do it three times just to make sure that we have a nice contact area to be able to view. Then what we're gonna do after running this next polisher, polisher number seven, we're gonna go ahead and inspect this footprint that we've created so that way we can make any adjustments as need be. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did for position number six. We're gonna slowly bring this in right there. We're gonna go ahead and stop the program, resetting it. And now we're gonna go ahead and manually move that the polisher over and into the piece to make sure that our Z height is correct. So right now we wanna go in the X direction and we're gonna go in the positive X direction using the remote. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go in the Y direction. So we'll open this up and get a little bit closer. Okay, couple key things that we wanna go ahead and keep in mind. When we started this program, we set it at 30 millimeter. The reason we set it at 30 millimeter is when you're doing mass production, we wanna go ahead and utilize the same material thickness from the very start to the very end. Meaning, so if you have 3 cm material, it's going to be 30 mil. If you have 2 cm, 2 cm material, it's going to be set at 20 millimeter. The reason why I highly suggest not calibrating each piece, because at the very beginning, I could go ahead and calibrate this piece and see exactly what that thickness is and put that material thickness into the, into the program itself. By doing that, it's going to adjust the tools up and down. So right now, what I'm very important is when you're doing countertops, when you flip it over, is that transition line. The transition line is where that profile follows all the way through to the polished surface. When you're putting seams together, you want that transition line to be exactly the same. So that way when it comes off the machine, we're 100% done when you put your seams together. If you go ahead and you're adjusting your material thicknesses on your CNC so your tools go up and down so it touches both top and bottom more appropriately, 
for that particular top, if you have to seam it together, your transition lines will not line up properly. Thus, you're gonna have to do handwork. So on this side of it, we can go ahead and do an evaluation of what the material thicknesses are that you have and how you can adjust your tooling so it's appropriate for those tools. Because what we're gonna see here is that a common thing that goes on with quartz is quartz is becoming thinner and thinner as I stated earlier. So getting into it, we're gonna inspect the profile first. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the material thickness at this particular moment is gonna be irrelevant, but I'm gonna show you some ways that we can adjust it so that way we can have a top and bottom radius on particular stones that are too thin or how we may go ahead and set up all the tools so it works fluently through all.